Hi, my name is Antonio Maradiaga, and in this video, I will show you how to consume the Ariba APIs. I'll be covering in this video how to get an access token. Also, how to refresh an access token once that uh, token has expired. And in the end, we will end up sending a request to the API. For this, we will have some prerequisites. We will need to have access to the developer portal. Also, we will need an application approved in the developer portal. We will be using an API client uh, like Postman. Uh, so we will need to install Postman in our computer in order to, to complete this video. Okay, so let's jump to it. So first of all, we will need to download Postman and install Postman. In this case, I've already installed it in my local computer. As you can see on the left-hand side, um, here is my Postman client. We will be using this to make the request to Ariba. Okay, so let's navigate to the Ariba developer portal. Um, so this is the Ariba developer portal that you're familiar with. Uh, let's search for an application that has been approved as we need um, an, app, an approved application in order to be able to communicate with the API. So let's go to manage and search the application. Here's my application. Uh, as you can see, this application has been fully approved. So our administrator has given us the OAuth uh, client and OAuth secret, which is what we're going to need in order to be able to authenticate to the API. Uh, notice also the application key. This is important as we will need to send this uh, when we are requesting uh, data from our API. In this case, this application has access to the supplier data API with pagination. So we'll be focusing on this um, API to, to make our request. The SAP Ariba Developer Portal Administrator should have shared with us already an application key, the OAuth client, the OAuth secret, and the Base64. We are need, we're going to need these details in order to be able to make requests to the API. The application key, we need to send it with uh, every request to the API. And the OAuth client ID and secret is what we need in order to retrieve an access token. And I'll show you how to do that. So let's first start with uh, getting an access token, okay? So we go to Postman and we're going to create a new collection. We're just going to name this collection um, Ariba uh, Authentication. Okay. Now let's create a request. We're going to call this fetch access token. Okay. And now um, we're going to change this to a post. So now here I need to know where the authentication server is. For that, we will just go to the supply data API with pagination documentation and it will tell us these details. Let's go to this cover supplier management, and we access our, our API. Here in the documentation, you'll see that there is details for the OAuth server URL prefix. We're going to use this in order to be able to authenticate to the API. So let's copy this and set it as, um, as uh, the URL. Now we're missing another bit here. I will be sharing the links on, uh, on the help.sap documentation. Uh, but you can see here, for example, on how to request initial access token. We can see that there is a part of the URL that we're missing, which is the V2 OAuth token. So we're just going to copy that and paste it here. Okay. So we have this. So that's our URL. We're good there. Now we need to specify um, a grant type. So the grant type, we're going to select, we need to navigate to body select the WW form URL encoder, uh, specify here, grant type, client credentials. And as mentioned before, we also need to specify um, our authentication. In this case, we're going to specify a new header parameter. Let's call authorization, basic. And here we are going to paste our base64 encoder string, that, okay? and we click send. As you can see, this has retrieved an access token for us. This access token is what we can use in order to be able to um, authenticate against our API. So let's save this, command save. Now that we have an access token, you can see that this access token expires in 1,440 seconds, which is basically 24 minutes. Okay, so two minutes before the token expires, we're able to refresh it. To, in order to refresh an access token, um, I'll duplicate this and I'll show you what needs to change. 
let's just rename it as well. Uh, we're going to call this refresh access token. The URL is the same, but we need to do some changes in our body. So here, the grant type, now it's refresh token. Uh, as part of the body, we also need to specify a refresh token. Our refresh token is basically this one that's here. So let's copy this, paste it here. And apart from that, we need to specify an authorization, which is what we had for, for our access token. So let's send this. You can see that we are basically getting the same details as before, right? Nothing has changed. And it has not changed because it hasn't expired or it's not close to expire. But uh, every time that we send this, we will get, we will, it will tell us uh, how long before it expires. Okay. So another way of uh, getting a new access token is by just sending a new request to the, to this, uh, to the access token uh, URL. So if we send this, this will generate a new access token for us and we can use this new access token. So uh, we will end up using this when uh, retrieving data. Okay. So now, uh, now that we have an access token, let's, uh, let's see what, what is it that we need to do in order to, um, to retrieve data from our supply data API with pagination. In our case, we want to extract all our vendor data. So we're going to use this method, the vendor data request. Okay. To simplify things, we're going to download the API spec. This download API spec will end up downloading a, a Swagger file. And this Swagger file, we're able to import it into Postman. So that's what we're going to do. Now that it has downloaded our file, you can see here that we have Swagger.json. And we're just going to go and import it. So upload files, Swagger.json, open. This will try, well, this will import um, the API documentation as a collection. So let's import that. And you can see that I have a new collection here. Now I'm just going to rename this uh, so that we're clear what it is. This is the supplier data API. We can see here that this is our vendor data request. This is what we're interested in. Um, it has a number of query parameters. It also has uh, some header parameters here. Uh, and we'll go through the documentation here just to know exactly what is it that we need to change, okay? In our case, there's, there's a variable here, the base URL. The base URL refers to this URL, to the production and test URL that you see here. So what we're going to do is that we're going to copy this and replace this base URL. This base URL is the same for other methods that are available in this API. So you'll see it in other, other methods here, for example. But in our case, we're just going to focus on this and we're going to retrieve all vendor master data. Okay. So let's see what we need to do in order to call that method. Okay. Vendor data request. So the documentation, it tells us that we need to send a request that is required. It's part of the body. So let's go to the body. In the body, we can see that there's different things that I can specify in order to be able to restrict or filter the data that I want to retrieve. To keep things simple, I will just remove most of them. We'll leave our performance and we define it that we want uh, JSON our performance. I don't need to specify this or this. I'll leave with questionnaire. It's not really required, but I'll just leave it there. And I'll specify that I do want questionnaires. I don't want custom fields, so that's fine. So now we have our request ready. This is our request. That's perfectly fine. Let's keep going through the documentation and see what else it tells us. We can specify uh, the dollar count um, query parameter. So query parameters are here in params. We can specify it, but it's not required. So let's remove it. Uh, also the top. Uh, vendors. So I'll, I'll leave this one here. I'll specify a value. It actually expects top 10. Okay. Let's, let's just retrieve the top 10. I don't need to specify a skip. Uh, so I'll just remove them. Whenever I un uncheck one of these checkboxes, it basically telling in Postman, like you will not send this query parameter. I don't want to filter it. 
and then there's this uh, parameter that's called realm. This is required, so I will specify the realm parameter. And this is uh, the realm that your API, your application has access to. Okay. We also need to specify an API key, right? So our API key, as you can see, it's part of the header. So we need to specify it as header here. Let's go to headers and specify API key. Now the API key is the value that I was mentioned before, which is this application key. So let's copy the application key. Let's just paste it here. Now, uh, we're still missing one more thing, which is the authentication. So you can see that we haven't specified an authentication. If we send this, this will fail. As you can see, it tells us no open API key found. So let's specify that. As a header parameter, we need to specify authorization and then bear. And now we need to specify our access token. So let's go back to where we fetch our access token. Let's copy this value. Okay, copy that. And now let's specify it here. Okay, that's our access token. If I send this, now retrieve supplier data from a from a realm. So just to recap, in order to be able to retrieve data from Mariba, what we need is to get an access token. To get an access token, we need to specify the base64 encoding, and we need to specify our body, our grant type client credentials. Once we have an access token, then we will use that access token when requesting to the API. Remember that we need to specify the URLs that are found in the documentation. Here, yeah, a production test URL. Um, and then we need to specify also uh, as header parameters, an API key, an authorization, and any query parameters that, that we need. In this case, Realm is uh, mandatory, so we specify Realm. And then we can just retrieve the data from our API. Thank you.